The watch market is still on a steady decline in 2024, and if you were someone who bought high during the pandemic watch economy and held on to the bag for too long and didn't want to let go and now you're stuck waiting, hoping, praying that the watch market will go back to what it used to be, you should probably just come to terms with the fact that you're screwed. But I have some predictions when it comes to watches that will be worth more, much more, incredible amounts more in the future. So if you're smart, you'll listen this time, and you'll pay attention, and you'll take notes, and you won't buy a steel Daytona for $62,000 and hold on to it when everyone else is selling it, hoping that you'll go up further, only for it to drop to like $25,000. Which is a thing that happened a couple years ago to a bunch of people. You should have listened. I, I tried to warn you. It is 12, 11 p.m. Let's get down to business. All right, so the first watch that I think is going to be worth big money in the future is one that is not very desirable at all, actually. The Rolex Air King 12 6900. Now, as I said a moment ago, this is probably one of Rolex's least popular offerings. It's essentially a Rolex Explorer with crown guards, but honestly, I really like this watch. It's grown on me immensely. And again, the watches that aren't super desirable now are usually worth big money in the future. And when people in the future notice that, yes, this is a black dial Rolex with big, bold Arabics, a splash of green on the dial, crown guards, 40 millimeter oyster case, they will look back and wonder why this wasn't more appreciated at the time. So you can still find them right now for well under $10,000. And if you're interested, I would probably scoop them up before people get privy to them. Another watch that I kind of wanted to just slip in here, but isn't really on my list is the uh, more modern Rolex root beers, the two-tone and just the straight Everose. Uh, these watches did not sell well initially from Rolex, and I think that they were stunning. I'm gonna tell you right now, you cannot find any of these for under $10,000, but they are still somewhat underappreciated compared to what I think they will be in the future, but I didn't want to put them on the list here today because, again, this is, like, that's, they're big money right now. I just think those are also going to be even bigger money in the future. Okay, next on the list is a Cartier, the Cartier Santos. This is their 1847 Auto in green. Now I know what you're thinking. Okay, Cartier, they make a bunch of watches and the Santos is actually a really common series of theirs. But I'm telling you right now, this Santos with a green dial is very, very uncommon and not super popular. And green is really not a common color when we're talking about dials for Cartier watches. This is something really strange about green dials, okay? Initially, when a green dial watch comes out, regardless of the watchmaker, they're usually very polarizing and not super popular. But once that green dial watch is discontinued, everyone comes out of the woodwork wanting them, which increases the price. I mean, we've seen this with Rolex, the Hulk, the 50th anniversary, you know, the green bezel black dial sub, the current Starbucks. For some reason, green is just something people don't initially want to admit they like, and then I think they kind of uh, sit on the fence for too long, and then by the time they really, really decide they want one, it's because it's been discontinued, and then they're forced to pay big money for it. So as a Cartier fanatic like myself, I'm going to tell you that um, kind of obscure color Cartiers do very well on the secondhand market, especially when we take into consideration that Cartiers typically on the secondhand market don't do well at all. So with this being in a kind of uncommon color uh, and it also being green specifically, I think that this Cartier Santos in green is going to do very well. And you can find them right now for under 10K. Next up real quick, Omega Speedmaster Professional 57. This is, I think, the purest Omega Speedy. This is, I think, the best Speedmaster Omega has ever come out with, period. And I think these were incredibly underrated. When these were announced and released, people said, oh, okay, cool, yeah, broad arrow, and, uh, you know, it's uh, some patination, that's cool. Now, this is easily one of the most gorgeous, purest Speedmasters and um, I think that it's just a fun, impressive reissue that is underappreciated right now. You can find them well under $10,000. 
And I think in the future, as time goes by, people will look back and say, that was actually a really, really impressive release. So uh, the Speedmaster 57, definitely pick one up. Now here's a controversial one, okay? The next watch I think is going to appreciate in the future is a Seiko Turtle. Now I know, I've been talking about watches under the $10,000 mark today. This is well, well, well under the $10,000 mark. And when we're looking at Seikos, it's like, dude, they make millions of units a year. There's no way this is going to appreciate. But mark my words, the Seiko Turtle is the last value proposition in Seiko's general lineup. They will discontinue it and the prices will increase. They've done it with almost every other iconic Seiko watch that used to be very, very affordable. So if you've ever been on the fence about buying a Seiko Turtle ever since I've started this channel and started talking about how Seikos are, you know, such a, a punch above the weight class. They're, they're such incredible spec monsters. Don't wait any longer. Buy one sooner than later because Seiko will discontinue it, wait a year, then reissue it under a different series and make it over a thousand dollars. I promise you. All right, so last but not least, when we're looking at watches that I think are gonna appreciate as time goes by, it's in a little bit of a different price range than the Seiko Turtle, but it's still, you know, kind of within today's parameters. This one is just at the $10,000 mark. The JLC Reverso Tribute Red Wine. Now, red's another one of those colors when it comes to watches. It's kind of polarizing, but it seems to be a bit more palatable than green is. But guys, I am obsessed with the JLC Reverso. I have one. Uh, my yellow gold Classique Mechanical is one of my favorite watches. It was like a 30th birthday present to myself. And it's a watch I'll never get rid of. Uh, Reverso is just such an incredible, it, it's, it's, the one watch I love more than like a Cartier tank, and I love Cartier tanks, but you can go down a rabbit hole looking at really obscure, very, very valuable reversos. And most of them aren't even hyper complicated watches. I mean, they have reversos with insane complications. Most of the ones that are incredibly desirable and very, very valuable aren't complicated at all. They just have obscure dials. And one JLC Reverso that is going crazy on the secondhand market is the Rouge Edition. That's their red dial, very simple two-hander. And so it seems when JLC does red, people pay attention, maybe not initially, but after the fact, and then prices go crazy on the secondhand market. So this Tribute Red Wine, uh, I like the small seconds, uh, you know, it's right at that kind of $10,000 mark, but I think it's going to double in the future. So yeah, guys, the watch market is, you know, on a decline and I would never recommend anyone buy high. But if you have some patience and you pay attention, you can find watches uh, that are a bit undervalued. And I think five that I mentioned today are a good starting point. Did I miss one? Should I add one to the list? Am I wrong about one on today's list? Go ahead, leave me that comment and let me know. And we do have a fleet of incredibly undervalued, beautiful, gorgeous watches at The Time Teller Shop. If you want to check it out, I'll leave a link in the description below, www.thetimetellershop.com. Number one place to find affordable vintage luxury watches, handpicked by me. All right, guys, I will catch you on the next one. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, The Time Teller, and always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it.